Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, recently I've done a lot of Intel B660 motherboard testing. And for those of you who don't wanna sit through over 50 minutes of content, I've created a top five best video for you that gets right to the point. Basically, I'm giving you my top five pick for the best entry level, best value, best micro ATX, best mini ITX, and then the best of the best, the best high-end B660 motherboard. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new range of Intel Z690 motherboards. With over two dozen models to pick from, Gigabyte has you covered. And for high-end enthusiast builds, there's the Z690 Aorus Master with its insane 19 plus 1 plus 2 direct digital VRM design. Or for more creative types, the Z690 ROG is an appealing option with its stacked I.O. Or for those of you on a tight budget, the Z690UD is an exceptionally good value choice that's available in DDR4 and DDR5 versions. Also, Gigabyte has a competition running right now to win a free Aorus upgrade, so please check the link in the video description. For me, the best entry level board has to be able to support at least the Core i7-12700 at or very near maximum performance, otherwise I view it as a false economy. So the absolute cheapest B660 boards, such as the ASRock HDV, are a complete waste of money in my opinion, as they'll limit you to a Core i3 or a few select Core i5 parts, at which point you might as well buy a cheaper B560 board, or preferably jump to AMD's AM4 platform. Even if you do only plan on buying a Core i3 or i5 processor right now, having the option to upgrade down the track for more processing power is worth spending the extra $20 now. The problem is there are very few affordable B660 boards that aren't complete junk. The ASRock HDV is currently retailing for $100 US, the Phantom Gaming, which is really no better, costs $110 US, and then there's the MATX version of the Pro RS at $120 US. In my opinion, $120 is really what you need to spend right now for a decent B660 board, as that will afford you the Soyo B660M Classic via AliExpress with free shipping to the US. Frankly, it's worth risking any potential warranty issues on the Soyo board, as it is worlds better than anything you can buy locally for under $140 US. When compared to the ASRock HDV, you're looking at roughly 60% greater CPU performance when paired with the Core i7-12700, so that alone makes the Soyo B660M Classic worth the extra $20 in my opinion. Now, if you're not as interested in penny pinching and just want a good value B660 board, something that'll look after you really well, then I highly recommend the MSI Pro B660M-A for $140 US or $150 for the Wi-Fi version. This is without question the best value B660 board on the market, and it's able to get the most out of all locked Elder Lake CPUs with ease. Being this is an MSI motherboard, you'll get warranty via a local retailer, so for me that makes it worth the extra $20 over the Soyo B660M Classic. Warranty aside though, it is a much better quality board with a lot more features. The I.O. panel features two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, as well as two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and then there are two USB 2.0 ports. There's also two DisplayPort outputs and two HDMI outputs. The VRM is completely covered by two large heatsinks. The primary M.2 slot gets a heatsink. There's four DIMM slots, four SATA ports, and a second full-length PCIe x16 slot, and 2.5 gigabits per second network support. So it's a very well-equipped board, given the price, and my ultimate best value B660 motherboard. For those of you with your sights on the Core i7-12700 or perhaps the Core i9-12900 and are willing to drop a bit more cash on the motherboard, the MSI B660M Mortar Wi-Fi is a great option and the best micro ATX B660 board in my opinion. It's certainly not cheap at $180 US and while that is Z690 territory, its VRM does put most entry level Z690 motherboards to shame. This is a Wi-Fi only model, so Wi-Fi 6 support is provided out of the box along with 2.5 gigabit LAN and plenty of USB ports, eight in total in fact, and that includes a USB Type-C. The board itself is littered with heat sinks. There's a large heat sink over the B660 chip, two M.2 heat spreaders, and two large VRM heat sinks, which also extract heat from the inductors, and the IO shield comes pre-installed. 
The VRM is rather mighty, packing a six phase V-Core with two Renesas 60 amp power stages per phase. So for the V-Core, there are a dozen 60 amp power stages. Couple that with the big heat sinks and you have a recipe for a very high performance VRM, which dominated our testing. Alternatively, if you don't have access to this model in your market or pricing isn't favorable, then a strong competitor is the Gigabyte B660M Aorus Pro AX, which also costs $180 US. The VRM performance is comparable and it also packs a great feature set. So there's just three mini ITX B660 motherboards on the market right now. The ASUS ROG Strix B660-i Gaming Wi-Fi, which costs $220 US. The Gigabyte B660i Aorus Pro, which isn't even on sale in the US yet. And the ASRock B660M-ITX slash AC, which costs just $120 US. Now the affordable ASRock board will be best suited to Core i5 processors, given it only packs a five phase V-Core using five 50 amp power stages. And they're the same power stages used by the Soyo B660M Classic, there's just three fewer of them. And this means ASRock's little ITX board won't be able to get the most out of the Core i7-12700, likely far from it. Still, if you only wanna use the Core i5-12400, for example, then it will work, you just won't be able to upgrade in the future, or at least you really shouldn't. So while potentially a good value combo when paired with the 12400, it's not exactly the best mini ITX board. That battle is brought to you by ASUS and Gigabyte, and I'm giving it to ASUS as the ROG Strix B660-i gaming Wi-Fi is available in the US, and in my opinion, it is a slightly better offering with higher quality audio and an extra M.2 slot, which is highly valuable on these kinds of products. You get an eight phase V-Core using Vachet 60 amp power stages, so more current handling than most B660 boards. It also includes Wi-Fi 6, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and eight USB ports on the IO panel. So it's a jam packed board that offers almost everything you'll get on the larger MATX models. Now, for some reason you want to spend way too much on a B660 motherboard, MSI Gigabyte and ASUS are willing to accommodate you. Full disclaimer though, I highly recommend as pricing approaches $200 US that you consider abandoning B660 in favor of Z690 as quality boards such as the MSI Pro Z690-A start at $190. Interestingly though, for $190 you get the MSI B660 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, and while I would normally opt for a Z690 motherboard as I just suggested, if you don't care about CPU overclocking, it is possible to argue that the B660 model is a better value option. For starters, you get Wi-Fi 6, and wireless networking of any form isn't offered by the Z690 model. The B660 board also packs better USB support with five Gen 2 ports on the I.O. panel, whereas the Z690 model only offers two. The B660 board also gets a higher quality audio codec, but the difference here will likely be minimal. Still, the B660 Tomahawk Wi-Fi is a better board overall, with full M.2 heatsink coverage and a pre-installed I.O. shield. Again, if you don't care about CPU overclocking, as in you're not going to buy a K-SKU part, then the B660 board is the better deal. High-end alternatives to the MSI B660 Tomahawk Wi-Fi include the Gigabyte B660 Aorus Master, which I can't find anywhere, so at this point it doesn't seem to exist. And then there's the ASUS ROG Strix B660-F Gaming Wi-Fi, which is also MIA over in the US. But it is available locally here in Australia for $50 more than the Tomahawk, and frankly, it's just not worth that premium. So for me, the MSI B660 Tomahawk Wi-Fi is the best high-end B660 motherboard. Buying a budget Intel motherboard is as difficult as ever with power limits and performance all over the place. Going into this, I was hoping to discover a few more gems than I did, boards available at reasonable prices that could extract maximum performance from the Core i7-12700, but in the end, very few boards were up to the task. Still, there are a few good options, mainly from MSI, and that being the case, I've got to say, I've been very disappointed with the Gigabyte and ASUS efforts here. Both have really failed in the sub $150 US market, offering boards that are really only suitable for Core i5 parts, at least for core heavy workloads, which kind of matters a lot if you plan on actually using your CPU at any point. Intel's weakness right now really is their platform, as there are several AMD B550 boards available at each price point, 
and most of them are very good. You can also pick up boards like the Gigabyte B550M DS3H for just $90 and it can run the Ryzen 9 5950X. This weak platform support is a real shame as the Elder Lake CPUs themselves are really very good and it's possible Intel has missed an opportunity here by not making their B660 chipset more competitive. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope this made picking an Intel B660 motherboard a lot easier for you. And if it has, please do hit the like button for us. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to become a Harbor Box community member, then you can join us over at Floatplane or Patreon. Links for both are in the video description. You get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams with Tim and myself, Q and A's and behind the scenes content. So a lot of cool stuff there. So yeah, if you're interested, Floatplane, Patreon links are in the video description. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.